And to me, I would say there's about 50% life left, maybe 40% um, life left. And to compare, this is the brand new pad. Um, and you can hopefully see that, yeah. So I would say there's 40% life left on these pads. What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are focusing once again on the old Ram. We are going to take a look at her brakes. Uh, I got some new brake pads for the front because I think they are pretty worn out, so we might end up replacing them. But either way, we are gonna tear into the front brakes and probably the rear and at least service them, if not replace the brake pads and maybe the rotors um, if they are worn as well. Unfortunately, uh, my driveway here is a little bit busy, as you guys can probably see. We got my truck, fifth wheel, cargo trailer, landlord's truck, and I think he is going to be needing this space to come in and out. So, a brake job is not going to happen here on the driveway. We are going to go super DIY, maybe even old school, and we are going to do the brake job right in the parking lot of a parts store. Um, <laughs> I've done it once with my old truck, just slapped on the brakes I just bought right in the parking lot. So that's kind of what we're gonna do today. Gonna find a nice flat spot, hopefully a little bit quiet and uh, just do some brakes. So let's head over to the parking lot now and start ripping this thing apart and see what we find. All right guys, like I said, we are going super DIY old school, um, just right behind me. I know it says Mark's, but uh, it's actually Canadian Tire, which is just a parts store up here in Canada. So if we do need some rear brake pads or rotors or even front rotors, um, should be all in that parts store. So we are at the flattest point I can see in the parking lot and uh, we're just gonna start ripping some wheels off and uh, showing you guys how to do um, at least your front brake pads, maybe even your rears and possibly even your rear parking brake shoes. So we'll cross those bridges when we get there. But uh, for now, let's start taking these front wheels off. So the wheel is off and I'm actually looking at these brakes and they actually don't look as low as I thought they were. Hopefully you guys can maybe see that. Obviously I'll take the caliper off and I'll uh, actually see what the back pad looks like, but the front pad looks like there's actually quite a bit of life left. To take the caliper off, these are 13 mil bolts. Um, and so you want to take both those out and uh, you can then take the caliper off and you can really see what your brake pads are looking like. So we'll do that next. And like I said, these are just 13 mil bolts and you just want to slowly, you just want to break these things free. I got these nice, long, ratcheting flex head wrenches. They weren't cheap, but they were 100% worth the money. These things are lifesavers when you're in tight spaces. And I just like to use them in general. Um, they come in handy. Okay. Ah, if I could work my hands any faster. All right, so there's your two 13 mil bolts. Don't want to lose these things. <laughs> put them somewhere safe um, and now what you can usually do and you might need a pry bar or a long screwdriver to help you out here you just pop the caliper right off just like so bang and now again you want to put this somewhere safe you really don't want to hang this off the um, brake line here it will snap and it's just not healthy for it so ideally you want to hang this somewhere um, where you're not going to be putting weight on this brake line. Looking at the health of our brakes, you can see there's actually quite a bit of life left on these things. Um, I thought there was much less. So there really is no reason for me to change these right now. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just continue with the brake service. I'll service these brakes and uh, we are good to go. This is your um, outside pad which usually tends to wear a little bit less than the inside pad, which is always a reason why, my light's not shining right in your eyes, um, which is always a reason why you kinda wanna take the wheel off and then just take a look if you think the outside pad looks pretty low, odds are the inside pad is even lower. So like, it's always just a good reason just to take the wheels off, 
service the brakes and just check where you're at. Um, like you can hopefully can even see, you know, it's just, it's just a little bit less life on the inside pad. The rotor itself, in my opinion, it's not great, but it still is well within, you know, a safety spec. Like this looks pretty half decent. The front side looks even better. And the lip in and itself is not that great. We're to a point where I don't even want to, I don't even have to measure these. I just know they're okay. Side note, the best seat, if you don't have one, is to actually just sit on the tire. Works pretty well. Um, but now, so I pulled these brake pads off. This is the rear pad. And you can see that there is quite a bit of life left. Now, most brake pads um, come with about 10 mil worth of um, pad left. Actually, you know what? I got the new pads. We will compare these two. Let's do that. Okay, we're back. So, like I said, this was the old brake shoe, and or sorry, brake pad. Um, and to me, I would say there's about 50% life left, maybe 40% um, life left. And to compare, this is the brand new pad. Um, and you can hopefully see that Yeah, so I would say there's 40% life left on these pads. Um, obviously the new one has a lot more beef to it. I think this is about 10 mil or a centimeter. Um, we usually go by mils here in Canada. And then this probably has maybe, you know, four to five mil worth of brake shoe left or brake pad left. So well within a respectable spec. And I've got 80,000 kilometers on these brake pads. So I'd say I'm good to go for my trip across Canada. Even with towing a trailer, I feel like there's a pretty good amount of meat left on these um, brake pads. So I'm just gonna service them up and I'll show you that and I'll slide them right back. And then we can return these front brake pads because I don't need them just yet. Um, so that's good. We're gonna leave everything. What we're just gonna do is just service everything up. Um, and now what that mostly consists of is obviously uh, lubing up your slider pins and checking them and make sure they slide freely. So I got one out already. I've already managed to get some dust and crap all over it, so we'll have to clean that up. Um, one thing to really look out for, I made this mistake when I first got in the trade, um, was that your slider pins, the two of them, may not be the same size. Um, I know with this truck they are, uh, they're the same size, so I could realistically flip them and not have to worry about it. But what I did when I first entered the trade is I flipped some sliders on, I think it was a Lexus, where they were different. And that caused the brakes to actually kind of seize in there. Um, so just really make sure when you take these slider pins out, you know which one is the top and which one is the bottom because they may be different, even if they don't look different. Um, you don't want to mess that up because that can really uh, affect your brake performance or even have a safety concern along with it. So what you want to do is you just want to lube these up and an, again another safety concern here when you put lube or grease on here and I'll talk about which type of stuff you want to put on here um, in a second liquid and grease which is kind of a liquid kind of a solid but we'll say it's a liquid at this point it doesn't compress and you can see here that this slide pin slides in and out of this um, bracket holder here. And if you put too much grease in here, it will not be able to slide all the way. And what you can do is you can actually have a liquid lock um, in here, which can really affect your braking and can be a safety concern. So always be critical of how much grease or lube you put in here. Um, don't put too much because if you over grease it, these pins won't be able to slide all the way in because it gets locked with fluid or fluid locked. Um, so just be wary of that when you guys are lubing your sliders up. And then the last thing what we'll do is what you should do. Um, a lot of guys will just take these brackets completely off and just um, just clean up all these um, the holders. So so yeah, these holders just you know hold. That's where the pad slides in and out. So when you're braking, this pad will sl will slightly slide in and out of this holder here. And what you want to do, you just want to clean this out um, with a wire brush or some guys even grind it down a little bit. And you just want to lube, and you just want to lube these things up as well as on your pad. 
And then another thing what I was always taught to do is you want to put a little bit of lube on the back side of your pad and that will, um, both inside and outside, and that will help from any squealing noises. I've always been told that you want to use some kind of silicon uh, based lubricant. Uh, for whatever reason, it seems to be um, better at um, high heat applications and is much better at preventing your brake sliders from seizing, which by the way is kind of a big reason why people end up having to do brakes is because their slider pins actually season the sliders and so the brake can't actually you know slightly release from the rotor and it just stays on against the rotor and you end up burning out your brakes um, very prematurely. So if you are going to pick up some lube for servicing your brakes check out some silicone based lubricant. So what I like to do is just put a little bit of grease you know on the top of it and then just kind of work it in like anybody would and just kind of and when you slide it back in just rotate her in slowly that way the whole pin gets lubricated and a key here guys like i said slider failures or slider pin failures are a main reason for um, brake failing you want to make sure that your um, rubber boot is all the way in because that'll just uh, really prevent any contaminations water dirt debris from getting in to this um, slider pin here and we'll do the same for the lower one perfect you know taking a quick look at where my pads slide in and out of the bracket it looks pretty rust free um, and pretty free of buildup because I service my brakes pretty consistently so um, they're going to be pretty clean but I will give it a good scrape with just a screwdriver and just to get you know kind of big stuff out of there ideally in a, you know an ideal world you would want to take this whole bracket off I think they're 21 uh, mil bolts one and two and you can just you know get a file in there a wire brush and really scrape it clean but I'm pretty confident that these are going to be fine uh, because I service them on a pretty regular basis but what you can find is vehicles that don't serve or drivers and vehicles that don't have their brakes serviced very often there gets a lot of rust jacking and corrosion in these sliders and again what that can do is if there's rust jacking it'll push against the um, pad preventing it from sliding in and out slightly once again just continuously rubbing against the rotor which is going to you know just prematurely fail um, either your rotor or your pad and yeah sorry guys i I was kind of hoping to do a full brake service here because I thought my um, pads and rotors, or at least my pads, were kind of um, at the end of their lives, but I'm not going to change them if they don't need changing. So I'll just show you how to service these brakes, I guess, today. Now, what I like to do is just put a little grease in these pad holder slots as well because, like I just said, they slide back and forth just like the slide pins do. And that way you just help to prevent some corrosion and you just help the pads slide in and out nice and easily. And then I'll even add just a little bit to the pad itself, just like so. And it just makes everything just work a little bit better and it will really silence down a break. And then finally, what I like to do, or what I was always taught to do, is you just put a little bit of lubricant on the back of the brake pad where it contacts. So this is where the caliper contacts the outside pad. So just put a little bit of lubricant on there. It'll quiet things down if they are squealing a little bit. Or prevent squealing. And then, let's see if I can do this without uh, making a fool of myself on camera here. And then bam. So you see that action right there? That's what we want. So when the brakes are applied, obviously, you know, the pad's gonna rub against the rotor, but when they're not applied, we want a slight retraction. And so that's exactly what we wanna see. Brake pads sliding in and out nice and freely. So we'll do the same thing to the inside pad. And then bam. See, once again, we have good retraction on the brake pad itself. So when brakes are applied, 
boom, we got good contact. And then when brake brakes are not applied, we have good retraction of the pads. So that's how you service your brakes, or at least that's how I service my brakes. So we'll slap this caliper back on. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll put the wheel back on, torque everything up, and then we'll do the other side. Last thing I'll say about this side is um, you should probably spray your rotor before you put your wheel back on uh, with some brake clean, just in case you touched it with a greasy finger or you got some grease on the rotor by accident. Um, you know, the last thing you want is a little bit of grease on your rotor. It will affect your braking. Okay, so we've pulled the wheel off already on the rear here, and I just realized that uh, the small-minded person I am, um, I did not bring my 10 mil um, wrench with me. I brought every single Imperial socket I have in my toolbox, um, but, you know, me working on big trucks, you know, Western Star Freightliners, they don't necessarily use metric. I know the engines, D, like DD is a Mercedes and they use metric, but I didn't bring any metric stuff. And normally I have, like these are all metric, but I broke this at work yesterday. Literally yesterday, I broke my 10 mil wrench, so I didn't bring it. And I knew that Dodge used 10 mil in the back, but I just didn't remember. Anyway, so I've taken a look at these brakes here and, um, I'll bring you guys in for a little show here. Hopefully you guys can see. Um, just like the fronts, there's probably like 40 to 35% of life left on these brake pads. And I did service these literally just before the winter, probably in November. So I know they're going to be fine. Um, and I'll just service them when I get back to Ontario after our big um, drive back there. I'll put the wheel back on. I'll torque everything up and uh, we're good to go. I was really hoping to actually do a full brake job on this truck. Thought I would have to do them, but turns out I don't, um, which is kind of crazy. I got 80,000 kilometers on this truck. These are factory um, pads and rotors on this truck and they're still not quite ready to be changed. There's still quite a bit of life left on them. Probably another like 10,000 kilometers would be my guess, maybe more. Um, so we are just gonna roll with these and we'll have to revisit this topic uh, maybe in a couple months when uh, it's time for some new breaks. So regardless, I hope this video was helpful. Um, you guys should probably service your brakes at least once a year, if not twice a year. Um, it just really helps to extend the life of your brakes um, and your rotors. Because uh, like I said, a lot of the reason why brakes fail is just no maintenance. Sometimes those slider pin seize, sometimes the pad seize in the actual uh, holder bracket and it just messes everything up. Uh, last thing I'll say is always remember to torque your wheels to the correct spec. It's 140 foot pounds for this truck. Uh, make sure you know what spec is for, for your vehicle and make sure you retorque them after 100 miles or 100 kilometers, whatever um, suits you because I have seen wheels cut, get loose and I have seen wheels come off. Um, because people didn't torque them or didn't do the retort properly. It's a real thing. You don't want it to happen. Um, it could put your life in danger. So enough of me rambling on. Hope you guys thought this video was helpful and uh, we'll see you on the next freaking video.